All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off by adding a spatial node. So go up and find spatial within your, within the node browser. So we've got a spatial here, we're gonna go ahead and add that. All right, there we go. So we're gonna add a couple more nodes here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and search for node 2D, which is right here, which is super useful. So add a node 2D, all right, got a node 2D. We also wanna add a sprite. Uh, sprite. And we want a normal sprite. We don't want a sprite 3D. We just want a normal 2D sprite here. So sprite, this is called sprite. All right, so we have that there. We're gonna go ahead and load up a texture. Um, so we're gonna come here, click load. And I'm just gonna do the default go to icon. You can do something more fancy or have, you know, all these little, I don't know, whatever you want, but we're just gonna go with the default go to icon, all right? So this no 2D here is the is the origin of our object. So it's kind of where, like uh, kind of the center of, of it. And then the sprite here is going to be the marker. All right. Um, and we're going to call this spatial way point. All right. So we've got them all named kind of nicely. There we go. All right, so we've got that all set up. So we're going to go ahead and add some code to this now. So we're going to go come up here to script. Um, and we're going to click new script. Um, we call this waypoint.gd. That's fine. So click create. All right, so we have this code here. So we're going to go ahead and add some of our own code. So we're going to go um, func. And then we are going to want to do we're going to want to use the process type because we're going to want this to update every frame so we're going to go process and just type until it auto corrects and then click enter all right so we're going to add a variable here first of all so this is going to update every single frame so we're going to go var and we're going to go ahead and actually we're going to get that and we're going to put this outside of here because we don't need to update every frame so we're going to go var and this is going to be cam and we're going to go is equal to get viewport dot get camera. So we want to get the camera because um, we're going to be using that later. So this just gets like the current camera that's been used for your scene. All right. So we're going to click into there and we're also going to go and get. So we, now that we've done that, we want to get kind of the position where the marker should be. And this does need to be updated every frame. So we're going to do this within the process function. So we're going to go var. Um, marker pose and that's going to be going to use this cam here so we're going to cam dot um, unproject position and then what we're going to use for this to get the position is going to be the waypoints wheel position so we're going to go self dot global transform and then we're going to go dot origin and then we're going to close those brackets so what this is going to do is it's going to get the position on screen of that 3D object, so that, that waypoint, and it's going to turn it into a 2D position for the camera. So now if we want to for that to show up, we can go dollar symbol, and what the dollar symbol does is it's an easy way to access children. So instead of writing like um, get children, um, you can just do like origin, and this accesses the node directly. So we're going to go origin dot position. And then we're going to say that is equal to marker pose. So now what this is doing is it's changing the position of the origin of our marker to be the position that has been unprojected. So if we go ahead and just save this now and then go ahead and play, what you're going to see um, is that it crashed. So what we're going to actually want to go ahead and do is not be dumb like me. We want to go ahead and get this, put this up here, and it's going to just sit there. And then within on ready up here, on ready we're going to say cam is equal to 
getViewport.camera. So this, what this means is um, once the scene's initialized and there is actually a camera, um, this is going to get that camera. Whereas before I was I was trying to get it kind of before the scene was initialized. So if I go ahead and stop that and play it again, this should work. All right, so you can see now that we've done that correctly, you've got the marker showing up in the 3D space and it looks pretty nice. Um, there is a couple of problems with this. Um, first of all, if I go ahead and look backwards, you can say, why is the marker showing up there? Um, that's pretty easy to fix. So what we want to go ahead and do is go back to this waypoint here and we're going to add another node to it. And this one is going to be a visibility notifier. Um, we can just leave with that name, it's fine. Um, but under this, we're going to say if the visibility notifier um, dot is on screen is equal to true. You don't have to have this true because it's just going to assume it's true there, but I like to do it just to make it uh, feel easier. If you were testing for false, you would actually have to say equal to false. Um, but you just do this. I'm just doing it this way for clarity. We're going to go um, origin dot hide uh, dot show. So what this means is um, that every time that this is on screen, it's going to show the object and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say else um, origin dot hide so what this means is that if it's on screen it's going to show the object uh, the origin if it's off screen it's going to hide it which means even when we have that weird thing where it's behind it and it's kind of doing that it's going to hide it so you're not going to see that, that weirdness happening so now that we've got that um, and also because it's origin, it kind of the marker in here, it's that, so it hides the marker as well. Um, but it just makes it easier because if you had multiple little f different sprites in here, just hiding the origin makes it easier instead of having to hide each individual thing. Um, but if we save that and click play, you should see that the marker is showing up. And if I look the other direction, it doesn't show up unless I want it to show up. One other thing. Um, you might say, is this getting bigger or smaller? No, it's it's actually the same size on the screen. Um, it's just if you're getting closer, it's, you know, it's taking up the exact same amount, but whereas the ground is taking up more. So this means that if you're far away or whatever, it's going to always be kind of the same size on the screen. And you might want to do dynamic things to show that. Oh, you know, this is far off in the distance. If it's too far away, hide and stuff. But um, that's up to you. One other thing you have to do, and this is to, to deal with problems you have if you're dealing with different resolutions and full screen and stuff, is you want to go ahead and add a camera. So a camera 2D in particular. So we're going to add a camera 2D. Um, and we need to change a couple of things for this. First of all, we're going to leave it in the position it is. Um, when you scale up the screen, if you did put this in the correct place, what would happen is that it kind of gets offset in the wrong way. So what you want to go ahead and do is you want to change this to a fixed top left. Now you can see that it's kind of jumped here and the, the origin stays here and it kind of expands out. So it expands down and to the right instead of kind of expanding out in all directions. So what this means is that um, everything's going to stay in the correct position even if you even if it's... Uh, even if it's a larger screen or anything like that. Um, if you don't do this, you have some really weird problems. You're not really going to notice it here, but um, if you try it with and without, um, when, it, when it comes to full screen and non-full screen, you will, you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, but there you go. So this is just a basic thing. You can add a lot more to it and kind of dynamically change the stuff. And maybe when the enemy sees you, it shows a the waypoint marker or whatever and you can have little animated things or whatever you wanted to do this is just the basics of how to make a a, a waypoint a 2d waypoint marker in a 3d world